What's good, Raider Nation? It's your boy, Sanji, and today I want to talk about Coach Gruden and this offense. There's a lot of stuff that I've read online bashing Coach Gruden, and I think there's a lot of stuff out there that's false. A lot of people out there say his offense is old, conservative, it's not going to work in today's NFL. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys some of the geniusness behind his offense. Now, the geniusness of John Gruden starts with game planning around the Colts slot defender. Now, in this 4-3 defense, one of the things that this slot guy does a lot is either blitz or help stop the run. In fact, about 30% of the time, when they're in nickel defense, this Colts team had their slot defender either blitz or in this case right here, as you're going to see, help stop the run. I mean, this is huge right here, right? You're going to get this extra guy to step up and contain the running back from getting to the outside as he does there and help defend the run. Now, that's huge right there. And the Colts actually tried this against the Raiders a couple of times. Here's one of them, for example, where Josh Jacobs gets stopped. And here's the second play. You're going to see that they, the guy does the exact same thing. He's going to chase this backside and he doesn't really have an impact, but it stops Josh Jacobs from cutting back. It doesn't allow him to have that lane as he should. Now, Coach Gruden is a genius, right? I said that at the beginning of the video, and I'm not lying. <laughs> You're going to see in this play right here uh, kind of what they did. They ran these quick screen plays, right? It's a play action, as you guys see right here, and it's a quick throw because you know that this slot guy, honestly, if you just do the math, 30% of the time, it's likely that he's going to come up and step up. But just based off of kind of where he's aligned, you know for a fact that this guy's probably going to come. And you see it in the next play as well. In this play, now this play gets stopped, uh, but this play had big, big hit potential. Now, we didn't get the yardage that we could have because Colton Miller is not able to get out there. It's a very hard block for any offensive lineman, but it's the concept that I'm trying to tell you guys that's important, right? The play action, the fact that Derek Carr turns his body to pretend to hand this ball off is important. Believe it or not, you hit him with the play action as Derek Carr does here. It allows this, this uh, slot defender to bite. And you come back and you throw it. And honestly, again, Colton Miller's not able to get there. But it's still a really nice concept. And, you know, in my last video that I made uh, regarding who's to blame, Derek Carr or John Gruden, a lot of people were saying that I was blaming Derek Carr. Some people said that I was blaming John Gruden. I'm definitely not blaming John Gruden. And I'm not necessarily saying that I am blaming Derek Carr because I'm not blaming him either. I think it's a little bit of both. But I think it's more likely to blame Derek Carr than John Gruden. And I want to show you guys plays uh, of why. I want to show you guys some film. I want to show you guys why John Gruden is a genius. So with that, let's just get right into it. To start this off, I want to start with the 60-yard end-around play in which the Raiders scored a touchdown against the Colts, right? The second drive of the very first play. And it's a nicely designed play uh, from a couple of different angles. And, of course, you guys see the touchdown. You guys see Colton out there. You guys see Waller out there. Uh, but I want you guys to watch it from the backside, and I want to break it down a little bit for you guys uh, because it's a very nice play, in, in my personal opinion. Uh, just to start off with, uh, I think the first thing that I find kind of interesting with this play uh, is just the blocking scheme. You know, just in general, the way this is blocked, in my opinion, is a very, very nice way to block. And it starts with, I guess, Colton Miller. Colton Miller is going to get downfield, as you guys are going to see right here. I'm going to forward it just a little bit for you guys. Uh, Miller does a good job. So first and foremost, he goes downwards, which gets this defensive end coming down hard, right? He's going to crash hard. And again, very nice play of the, the offense alignment to sell it, to at least come down, right? Um, and then the second block that I like uh, is, is Waller, right? You get Waller who's going to come down. And not only is he not going to block the first guy who is this defensive end, he's going to let that guy go. Right, because he knows this play is going wide. That's a teachable moment right there because there are some tight ends that will not make that block. Right. Another part of this play that I like is, of course, uh, you have the receiver here. And believe, believe it or not, I want to back up to the all 22. Um, this is important because look at the fact that the receiver right now is on the outside. Right. Uh, and then as this play is going to continue to go, you're going to kind of see that the receiver is going to shift his body and shift to the inside. Now, that's important because it creates a lane for the running back to run through. All right. That's a really, really nice block right there. And honestly, you can say, well, maybe he should have stuck to the inside and pushed the guy out. Uh, I think that would have made more sense. Uh, but in this case right here, 
the receiver is has outside leverage as you see he in this play the corners to the inside but the receiver shifts right he's able to shift and then just kick this guy out and create that lane and that's a teachable moment but it's something john gruden has to teach his players to do um, and again just from the all 22 you guys can see uh, as well uh, you're gonna see that block by colton he's gonna come um, downwards downwards realize that these guys are not going to make the play and instead he turns up field and that's a very very nice teachable uh, type thing by the coach and i'm just going back down here um, another part of this play that i like is the fact that it's not going to be a handoff from Carr uh, to trevor davis it's going to be a pitch and if it's a handoff it kind of slows things down but the fact that it's a pitch it's much better Right, I know that might sound kind of stupid, but uh, believe it or not, a handoff is much slower than a pitch is. And the fact that it's a pitch, I think that's a great job done by Coach Gruden. So again, I think Coach Gruden did a really nice job designing this play from the blocks, from the tight end to the receivers, to each player knowing every individual thing that could possibly happen, that could potentially happen. And the fact that these guys are able to execute it is very nice you know even uh, the fact that it's not a handoff and it's a pitch i like it i really really like this design play i really like the concept uh, and i really like the fact that it was a 60 yard touchdown i mean who doesn't like 60 yard touchdowns i hope we score a couple of these this uh, upcoming week uh, but i want to show you guys a couple other plays as well all right you guys for the second play i want to show you guys the flea flicker that went for a touchdown and i want to break this down a little bit because there's a lot of interesting parts to this play now one of the things that most interested me was the fact that john gruden chose number 50 to be the linebacker that they're going to attack think about that for a second they could have flipped this uh they could have flipped this play and they could have had the motion man go to the right and uh, they could have thrown it to him on that side but they didn't they knew where number 50 was lined up and they knew exactly where they wanted to go so it's a great design play uh, but more than that i like tyrell williams says fake because without that fake it makes things much more difficult that fake sells it you know if tyrell williams takes off running and he doesn't sell the fake the defense is going to fill that out you can feel when something's not right and you can feel these types of plays coming but the fact that Tyrell Williams sells the fake, it gets the defense to jump just a little bit. And honestly, in this play right here, one of the things that really gets this play to work is if you watch the safety, Eric Harris, uh, watch him take a step forward, right? And you're going to see him right there take that step forward. And then he's in panic mode. So he's, now he's stepping back. He doesn't really know where anyone's at. He kind of sees Tyrell Williams uh, and he kind of just sticks with Williams. But he doesn't account uh, for J.J. Nelson at the bottom of the screen who catches the pass and, and takes it in uh, for a touchdown. Um, but it's a really nicely designed play. You know, this is 100% John Gruden. It's it's the design, you know. I really, really like it. I like the concept. And overall, I think this is one of those things that makes John Gruden who he is. You know, he will do what he thinks will work. He'll put these types of trick plays in, right? Well, this past week, it was the end around that went for a touchdown. The week before, it was the flea flicker. All right, guys, here's another play that John Gruden drew up. And this is a third and 10, and we need 10 yards, right? Third and 10. Um, this is going to be a screen pass. Now, uh, something happens. There's some sort of miscommunication. You guys can watch the play. It's a nicely designed screen pass. Honestly, I mean, if this play were actually caught and we actually had a chance to get some yards, it would have been a really nice play. And it's primarily because of the design of the play and you know, a lot of these screenplays nowadays go for pass or, or become pass interference, but this one would not have been. As you watch both receivers, they're both shuffling and, and going towards the right, right? So there's no way this would be a pass interference on Hunter Renfro anyways, because he has yet to make contact. He's just going to shuffle sideways, keep going. He has yet to make contact. Now, you're just going to see the ball already has hit the ground at this point. Um, I don't know for what reason Carr decides to just throw this and throw this into the ground. Hold the ball, give your guys a chance. At the very least, you throw it a, a two seconds later. Doesn't make sense, but the smart part is the fact that Hunter Renfro is not blocking. You know, he's going to wait for this. Now, at this point right here, uh, you know, Renfro is going to 
make a great block because he's he's put himself in the position where the defender has to take the outside right um or the inside i should and renfro is going to easily hook him and you have a receiver down here and honestly the receiver here can catch this pass and he'll have a lot of room and he can choose where he'd want to go with the ball right unfortunately Carr doesn't really give this guy a, a true chance to actually make any sort of play but it's a nicely designed concept and i honestly wish i could hear what coach gruden says to uh, Derek Carr about this play and i wish we can find out what went wrong here because i can tell that one of the receivers is looking back for the ball and the other receiver is getting ready to block now in my opinion they both might have uh, maybe one of them is supposed to turn around quicker I, I don't really know but it's still a nicely designed play uh, the fact that you know if it's run correctly if you know whichever receiver was supposed to stop and get the ball to me it looks like it was supposed to be trevor davis number 11 um he could have made a play honestly it's nicely blocked by the uh, tyra williams at the bottom of the screen as well and don't really know what happens but uh, it's still a nicely designed play in my personal opinion if it hits, it could have hit for, for a lot of yards, in my opinion. You know, Trevor Davis would have been one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the safety. Carr throws it without any real pressure. But um, I think it's a nicely designed play. And these are the types of things I like to see from our offense. I like to see these types of plays when it's third and 10. I know people might say, why are we taking a, a short play? But when you really look at it from the All-22, um, honestly, it's a three-on-three -three drill. You have two blockers. You have... Two guys that should be blocked and then you have the one safety who's deep and of course you have the one guy that's going to catch the pass and he'd be one-on-one -on -one with that safety if he can make a play this play could pop now i know it's not a whole lot of plays but i showed you guys three plays now as well as some of the in-game adjustments that john gruden did against the colts kind of looked at their film took advantage of it a little bit now this was just a quick video this is just something i noticed and there's a lot of other things that i've noticed throughout the season so subscribe to see that subscribe to see those videos you know so far the first quarter is over of the season we're two and two we're in, we're in a good place we got the bears to look forward to next week and one of the things that you guys are often asking me is why is maurice hurst and why is pj haw arden key why where are these guys why are they not showing up well i don't think as they're not showing up i think they're all asked to do a little bit of different things and i'll break those down for you guys in a future video be on the lookout for that i hope you guys enjoyed this video here Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, thoughts, opinions, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.